All right, welcome back to the Stutzman channel. Today we're going to be working on the 94 Ranger. So I got some few issues here I'm trying to take care of. Now, if you remember last year, you know I had I had a leaking uh, compressor. I went through this whole job and then found out about a month or so later that the uh, compressor was leaking. So I got another compressor. It's new, and we're going to put that on there. But I, I do have uh, some refrigerant that's still in there, so I'm going to recover that and get it out. And I'm not going to show about replacing the uh, compressor, and I'm also going to replace the suction dryer accumulator. If you want to see that procedure, I got a full part video series where I just replace everything except for the evaporator, and in that case, I, I flushed it out. So if you do want to see that, then be sure to check out the uh, links which I'll leave in the description underneath this video, and also I'll leave them at the end of the video so you, you can get it both ways. But I figured I could just bring you guys along so we can go ahead and recapture this here R134A refrigerant. So let's do that now. So as you can see, we have some pressure inside the system. So let's go ahead. We're going to recover this here refrigerant out of this truck here. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I'm going to do the recover. I don't want to save a record, so I'm going to hit the check mark. NAS asked me to uh, make sure both valves are connected and that they are open. So I was checking the inlet pressure. And, I, and right now it's asking about a refrigerant identifier if you want to hook it up to a USB port or if you have a standalone unit you can use that. I do have a refrigerant analyzer but I do know that this system is R134A because I put it in myself and I checked the refrigerant before I put it in so I know it's okay. So I'm just going to go ahead to the next step. And right now it's actually pulling it out. It's the first stage you're seeing right now. You can see the gauges are slowly coming down. And you can see that it's actually weighing how much refrigerant that is taken out of the uh, system. So it looks like right now we have uh, 0.097 kilograms of refrigerant uh, recovered. So we had a big leak here. I think it's supposed to be 0.676 kilograms. And we didn't get any oil drained out. That puts us back to our main menu. At this point right now, I'm just going to turn the machine off. And now we're going to make sure these valves are fully counterclockwise. Just release the Schrader valve that's inside. And then we'll just take them off. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be replacing this here compressor. I've already got the four bolts out for the four mounting bolts. I got one bolt back here for the uh, you know, suction and the uh, high pressure gas line here. And also I'm going to be replacing this uh, suction accumulator right here. Alright so let me get this done and then I'll catch you guys in the next shot. Alright we got the compressor on. We got the lines hooked up. I put some oil in it. I got the suction accumulator replaced. Got the line hooked up over there so let's get ready to pull a vacuum on this system. Okay. We're going to do a vacuum. Checking the inlet pressure right now. But I want to save the record. I'm going to do uh, 45 minutes. Vacuum leak test on that right there. It's, I believe it's uh, five minutes. It's pretty, pretty useless, I think. But we'll go ahead and we'll do it just so we can. 
So as you can see, it's going to pull the vacuum for 45 minutes, and you can set that to whatever you want. So the last job I did, it was uh, it's, it saves the settings from whatever it was the last time, and I had it set at 45 minutes. I think that the uh, default is 30 minutes. So we're going to let that go, and then when it's almost over, then I'll bring you back online so you can see the next step. So as you can see, it's doing a uh, conditioning of the internal tank, so it wants us to wait. So after that, uh, doing an internal tank procedure, you can see now that the vacuum is in progress, so we have about 41 minutes left. So when it's almost about ready to expire on that, I'll bring you guys back online. So as you can see right now, it's doing a vacuum leak test. And this is going to last for five minutes. So when that's almost over, I'll come back to you again, and you'll see what's the next procedure is going to do. So as you can see, it passed the uh, vacuum leak test, which was for a five-minute test here. This test is okay if you have a gross leak, but if you got a small leak, this here test is pretty useless, but I just wanted to show you what it looked like. Now while it's under a vacuum, what I like to do is I like to do a vacuum uh, test here using the ultrasonic leak detector as we have right here. Now I'm, what I will do is I will take and put this on the microphone of the camera. I'm not sure how well this will pick up, but hopefully it will give you an idea how sensitive this here device is. Now like I said, I'm not sure how well this will pick up, but I just want to show you the sensitivity. You could probably maybe hear a static sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here in front of this here tube and I'm just rubbing my fingers together. Hopefully you will be able to hear that. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to go around this here AC system. I'm going to see if I can pick up a leak anywhere. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going around the suction accumulator fittings See if I hear any noise where there's any kind of uh, air that's being rushed into any of these fittings. Now let's go around the compressor. I'm going around where the uh, compressor bolts together. Going on the back of the compressor where the hose is bolted up. Going up around where the compressor seal is at. And I don't hear anything. So let's go to the next step. Let's go ahead and recharge this system. Okay, let's go to the next step. We're going to do a charge. I don't want to save the record. Just checking for a database. I'm going to change it to ounces. Let's look in the database. Now this will only go up to 1995, but the capacity is still the same for 1994. We're looking for a Ranger. Two point three liter engine. 
So there is the capacity for the refrigerant to 22.114 ounces. And I've checked that in the service manual. That is correct. And so now, it's going to be reading the tank weight. So it says do not disturb. And as you can see, it's charging the system up now. Now, did you notice as it gets closer and closer to the uh, set point of 22 ounces, it will actually go ahead and start slowing down the amount of refrigerant that goes in. So it actually slows it down so we can get right creep right up on that set point. So now it's going to build the tank pressure so it can finish up the sear charge. So it wants to equalize the hose, so I'm going to just press to continue. Now right now it wants us to go ahead and disconnect the high pressure service line. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do another pressure check. So I'm going to use the ultrasonic leak detector again, and then I'm going to use a refrigerant leak detector before we crank up the engine. Alright, I've already gone over it with the uh, ultrasonic leak detector. I didn't pick up anything. So now, now I'm using a refrigerant leak detector. Going over the suction accumulator dryer field fittings here. Now going back over to the compressor.
Okay, I don't hear anything, so let's go to the next step. Okay, the high pressure side of the hose has been disconnected. Low pressure hose is still connected, so we're going to the next step. So now you can see it's equalizing the hoses. Basically, any of the refrigerant that's still in the hoses is going to take it and it's going to draw it back into the system. So now it's going to go ahead and it wants us to go ahead and take off the other hose and then we can turn the vehicle off. Alright, the hose has been disconnected. The vehicle's still running. I'm just going to go to the next step. Basically what it's doing here is it's just taking the refrigerant out of the hoses and taking it back into the tank. That completes the that completes the charge. The truck's been running for a few minutes, so let's take a look at the temperature coming out of the outlet. I'm on the center duct here. Looks like we're probably, I don't know, maybe 38, 37 degrees. Looking pretty good to me. Let's wrap this video up. Okay, guys. That's it. Not that much to it. I will see you guys in the next one because with old vehicles, there's always something. You guys take care. Have a good one.